the 1981 horror flick, The Fun House, has gotten a new 4K upgrade from Scream Factory. Tonight, in the fun house, something wilts for Amy. Something deadly, something evil, something that feeds on the flesh of young innocence. Something that tonight will turn the fun house into a carnival of terror. How does the Toby Hooper slasher flick hold up? Well, let's take a closer look. The Fun House is about four teens who attend a sleazy carnival. They hop on a few rides and check out some attractions, including one that has a two-headed cow. So this idiot has the bright idea of sneaking into the Fun House ride and spending the night. And the teenagers do just that, and once inside they witness something awful, and are soon stalked by the deformed son of one of the carnival workers. As I mentioned earlier, The Fun House was directed by Toby Hooper, the director of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and many other classic horror movies. This movie is just dripping with atmosphere, and I love the foreboding sense of dread leading up to the teens entering The Fun House. The film takes its time getting to the monster, but it's never boring. It's genuinely creepy, and once we get into The Fun House, it's disturbing and scary. Here's the thing. I want people who haven't seen this film to watch it, so I really don't want to go into too much detail and spoil things. But damn, this is good stuff. The monster is first introduced in a Frankenstein mask, drooling all over the place, grunting and being disgusting. And when his face is finally revealed, holy crap. You know, he actually looks kind of like me when I first roll out of bed in the morning. Huh. The look was designed by Rick Baker, who did the effects in American Werewolf in London. It's disgusting and horrific, and just amazing. The cast does a great job, and Elizabeth Barrage is solid as the final girl. Now I do wish her character was a bit more proactive during the climax though. Toby Hooper's direction is very stylish, and it's all brought together beautifully by the amazing score from John Beale. Now this musical score is so good that I'd love to get it on CD. It's just fantastic. I will say, I think the third act does falter a bit. In one of the interviews included on this release, one of the actors talks about how the production ran out of time and money near the end of the shoot, and kind of had to rush through things. And I can see that. It's just not quite as solid as everything that came before, but it's still good. This film is a real gem, and is such a throwback to a different time. I get some flack for saying this sometimes, but I don't feel that modern horror films are that good. I feel like a lot of them are more interested in preaching, or getting a fresh score with stuffy film critics on Rotten Tomatoes. I feel like the films these days are just not as interested in scaring people or entertaining people like the movies were back in the day. Movies like The Fun House. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, and maybe I just haven't discovered all of the hidden modern horror classics yet. But until then, I'm gonna keep looking to the past to really get my horror fix. And The Fun House is a true classic that I highly recommend seeing. Scream Factory has created a new 4K scan from the original camera negative. The results are fantastic, and the film has never looked better. Now it is a bit soft at times due to the way it was shot, but it still looks great and the colorful environments of the funhouse leap off the screen. Now when comparing the image to the old 2012 Blu-ray release, the results aren't dramatically different. But the new release does give the film a more natural and pleasing look. Also the framing is a little different on the 4K version, with the image shifted slightly to the left. A few of the shots that seemed a bit overly bright with the previous release have been graded a bit darker here, and it all looks great. But the new release is sharper, with brighter colors and deeper black levels. Again, overall it's not a dramatic improvement over the previous release, but it is superior. The audio sounds great, and you get the option of a 2.0 DTS HD Master audio track or a 5.1. Now once again, no Dolby Atmos track is included here, which is fine, but I would have loved to experience this with the Dolby Atmos sound, but it still sounded great coming through my soundbar and subwoofer. All the special features from the previous Scream Factory edition have been ported over here, plus new stuff. From the previous release, we've got an audio commentary with director Toby Hooper, trailers, deleted scenes, and four interviews that range from three and a half to 11 and a half minutes. We've got actor Kevin Conway, producer Mark Lester, composer John Beale, and a brief audio interview with actor William Finley. New to this release are four more interviews ranging from 9 to 18 minutes. We've got actor Miles Chapin, Largo Woodruff, Wayne Daba, and effects guy Craig Reardon. 
These interviews are fantastic, and added together with the previous special features, it all equals out to a pretty thorough package on the making of this film. Scream is included a slipcover with the iconic original poster art. Reversible art is included as well, which hasn't been the case with a lot of their previous 4K releases, so this was nice to see. The Fun House is an 80s horror classic. The new 4K scan and new interviews are worth an upgrade, especially for die-hard horror fans like myself. Director Toby Hooper really was a master of horror, and I hope this release helps illustrate that fact. The man was a legend, plain and simple, and the horror genre, and movies in general, are lesser in his absence. So thanks for the memories, and rest in peace. You are missed.